I got a chance to see the animated version of Look Back in the theater, and boy, did it hit home. I thought reading the manga version was pretty rough,、um, but the anime did a wonderful, beautiful job of translating it into motion picture. Look Back is a one shot manga that Tatsuki Fujimoto did between part one and part two of Chainsaw Man. I think that's how you, you call it volume one, volume two. I don't know. In between. And I'll just read the log line from the IMDb because I'm very bad at doing the elevator pitch thing. The overly confident Fujino and the shut-in Kyomoto couldn't be more different, but a love of drawing manga brings these two small town girls together. So that's the basic gist of it. Now, I'm sure that you've probably seen or will see many, many video essays on the lookback manga. And when the anime version gets more widely distributed and more people see it, you're gonna see a new crop of video essays pop up. I encourage you to watch all them shits. I'm probably gonna watch a few when I get done with this while I'm drawing the comics because that's what we do when we wanna pretend that we're not sad by ourselves in our rooms all alone. <laughs> But you're gonna see a lot of different takes on the material because I think this is a story that can be interpreted. Many different ways. So, I thought it would be interesting to share what I got out of it as a working cartoonist. And there are two major themes that kind of struck home with me. Number one, you are someone's favorite creator. And that person might not be vocal about it. They might be too nervous to contact you or talk to you in person or just don't have the means to get in touch with you. But someone out there loves your stuff. Loves the way you tell a story, loves the way you draw characters, backgrounds, whatever it is. To someone out there, you are their absolute favorite storyteller. And I think that goes with comics or music or videos, anything that you create. If it's out there for someone to, to experience it, you are somebody's favorite thing. And it's tough when you don't get that feedback, you know, specifically with drawing comics or Graphic novels. You spend a lot of time alone drawing pages. Maybe you get some feedback from your editor. Maybe you get some feedback from the writer, but it's very isolating and you don't hear from people all the time. So you don't know if this stuff is making an impact. But there's someone out there that your work has changed their life, maybe in a small way, maybe in a more significant way. So keep going. And this is, you know. As much to hype myself up as to anyone out there who's struggling a little bit. But I guarantee you, someone out there loves your stuff. And I think you might know this because you know what it feels like when you've experienced somebody's work and it's made an impact on you, whether it's a little one shot or like a zine or like a little Instagram, like four panel, four coma kind of thing. You've been affected by stuff. And comics out there have become your favorite thing. And you might not have thought to reach out to that creator and say, hey, I love your stuff. It's really affected me. Or, you know, I, this, this little comic you did really brightened my day.、Um, and that's okay. So, whether they get in touch with you or not, someone out there truly appreciates your stuff. So, keep going. Please keep going. To myself, please keep going. <laughs> the second thing. I got out of Look Back is the idea that anytime you create something and put it out there, there's risk to that. There's risk to opening yourself up to others, to people you work with, to the public, especially when you're creating something that means so much to you. Anytime you make a song, anytime you make a video, anytime you make a comic and you put it out there in the world, there's risk that comes along with it. And sometimes it can be dangerous. <laughs> And that can be extremely terrifying because once it's out there, you have no control over how someone else interprets it or takes it or feels about it, any of that stuff. So there's risk to that. And it's very scary. It can be very scary. But in the end, I, I think it's worth it. It's worth sharing that bit of yourself with someone else, maybe you're working with, or someone in the audience who's experiencing what you're creating. I think it's worth it, which kind of relates back to the first thing that I got out of it, which is that your thing is someone's favorite thing. So, those are the two messages that kind of hit me in the face watching this, experiencing it again, because I read it first. And then I watched the movie 
And then I went back home and I read it again. And those were the two messages that kind of hammered themselves into my head. The film is a lovely interpretation of the manga. The animation is excellent. It still retains that kind of sketchy feel to some of Fujimoto's line work. The music is wonderful. It's not overbearing. It doesn't kind of punch you in the face, but it, it fits the mood. I, I wish it had a wider release in theaters because when you get to see it on the big screen, it kind of envelops all of your senses. The screen is big, so the, the images fill up your entire face. The sound just draws you in the music. It's an entire experience. And, you know, you can't necessarily get that on a small screen like your computer monitor or your phone. I hate to sound like a film snob, but, you know, I, I get it when people say that, like, movies are made to be experienced in the theater, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one really, really felt like that. It felt appropriate to see it on the big screen and to experience it that way. It's a shame that G Kids, you know, drops these things for like one or two days and then hops out. And then you have no idea where it's going to be, like if it's going to be on streaming or if it's going to get a physical release. But whenever it comes out in a form where you can get to it, I highly encourage you to watch it, especially if you're struggling with motivation or feeling a little burned out and just can't quite figure out why you're making stuff. I mean, you can experience it now. You can always go and read the manga. I don't know, maybe if the, the manga isn't enough to, to get your inspiration flowing, maybe the, the anime will help kick that into gear. This is a little rough because I didn't really plan anything out, but, um, you know, I, I wanted to share with you how, how this piece of art made me feel. And I hope more of you get to experience it. And um, yeah, so uh, make cool shit if you're not already making cool shit. And if you are making stuff and you're struggling a little bit, keep going. Just keep going. Do what you can. If you need to take a break, that's cool too, but don't stop. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs>